Hey guys, welcome back to EMT Made Easy. Today I am gonna quickly go over vital signs. Now for vital signs in the NREMT, you need at least three things, right? You need to have respirations, a pulse, and a blood pressure, and that's really all you need. But it's always better to just go above and beyond, do more than what's expected of you. Um, it's gonna make you a better EMT, which leads to you being a better, a better paramedic, better prepared. So this is what I have my students go over for vital signs. We do probels, which is a full set of vitals. Uh, and I'm gonna break this down now. So probels is a mnemonic that might might help you out. It should help you um, remember what the vital signs are, at least all of them. So first off, we have uh, the pulse. So the pulse needs to be between 60 and 100 beats per minute. That's a good range, all right? Next, the R stands for respirations. Uh, good respiration rates between 12 and 20. Now we have O2 saturation. So the O stands for O2 saturation. And 94% or above is generally pretty good for your patients. That's a, a good O2 saturation uh, reading. And then B stands for blood pressure, all right? Uh, 120 over 80, that's the textbook normal for your patient. And then the E stands for eyes. Now the eyes, we use what's called pearls. Pearl. So pupils are equal and reactive to light. That means that you got a light, a little light, you covered one eye, and the eye that's not covered, you kind of come at it with the light, the little pin light on the side, and see if the pupil constricts as the light gets closer and closer or more to the front anterior of the patient. So you do it to one eye, if it constricts, awesome, good job. Go ahead and cover the other eye, do the same thing. Hopefully the eye also constricts, and if it does happen to both, that means that the eyes are pearl. They're equal, pupils are equal and reactive to light. That's what that stands for. So you want that to be pearl, you want the eyes to be pearl. Now we have lung sounds. When you're getting lung sounds, you want to make sure that you are comparing both sides, all right? So what that means is that if, I, if you get a lung, the lung sounds here, you start here, you're not going to go down, all right, to get your lung sounds down here. You're going to go straight across. That way you can compare it. So it's generally from here to here, go down, and then across again because you want to compare to both sides. You don't, you're not, you, it's not a good idea to compare top to bottom or bottom to top, compare side to side equal, all right? Get a good idea of what they both sound like, what si uh, the both sides. All right, the next L is gonna be LOC, level of consciousness. So you can go ahead and try to get an ANO times three, but usually just asking the proctor or asking your patient, hey, how you feel, you, you feel you, do you feel good? You'll be able to tell if your patient has kind of slacked off or I started going mentally altered. You'll, you'll figure it out. Or you can always ask the proctor for your NREMT, of course, um, if your patient is still ANO times three or four. And then finally, we have skins down here, all right? So skins, what's the color, what's the temperature, and what's the condition? Real quick, in under four minutes, that's what vital signs is, uh, a full set of vital signs. That's what you should get. Um, always go above and beyond. I wouldn't. I would never recommend doing the bare minimum to get by. It just makes you look better, be more confident, be more competent, uh, and check us out next time. Peace.